Hello, and welcome back to one more. Why did I say it that way? It's, it's late. I'm doing my last one for the night. One more. Compiler from scratch, recreationally. Creating a compiler from scratch, recreationally. I can't. Brain processing. Maybe I shouldn't be recording one more episode. We're going to finish off the basic parts of the lexer. I didn't do everything I said I would do off camera. Like, I figured maybe it'd be worth showing you how we're lexing operators, but I added a couple more cases to our really simple one character check here and I threw in an assert for numbers. Um, really, we should probably not do numbers until after we test that all of our operators parse properly, so I think I'm just gonna comment that out. It'll hit the default case, we'll see a bunch of digits pop up. It'll be fine. What we're gonna do for operators, though, let's just start with plus, and I'll explain as I go along. There are multiple different characters that go into each of one of these symbols. Uh, for different kinds of tokens. And that may not have made sense. We're going to always advance the first one we see, allowing comments every time. But then we want to check what the next character we landed on is. Sometimes we're going to have to peek, maybe even, but I, I, I think for the most part we can just say, hey, if lexer current character is equal to a plus, for example, in this case, we're going to eat it again. And now we've got the plus plus token. So then we want to set uh, out token kind equal to YSE CTK plus plus. We're going to keep the underscore in there. So that's the kind of thing that we're going to be doing. And then else um, we can set it to just regular plus. We're also going to do plus equals. So that'll just be if plus turns into an equal then it's plus equal, right? And that's the kind of structure that we're going to be doing for each of these tokens here. We just now need to go create all of these names for all of these tokens that are multi, uh, multi-byte. We can leave the plus as is. It's implicitly an int as a character literal, so it'll just convert no problem. So let's go into, that's not what I wanted, into token def here. So we've got all those fancy things up here. I'm going to see real quick if I have a list that I can process here of all of our, let's see, all of the operators that we want so I don't have to type so much. Da, 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 da. So if it starts here and goes to less equal greater plus plus minus equal plus greater, here's a bunch that I can probably turn into the things that we want. Right, let's, I'm probably just going to go manually update all these without making too much of a fuss over it. So in tokens def, we're going to want to ctk a lot of things. Um, minus greater, minus greater, that's our pointer in direction, minus minus. Greater. I wonder if I can. I hold on. Uh, can I do this into snake case? Oh, I can't. Ooh, okay. Well, since I can do that, actually, let me do this all over again. Copy. Do whatever. I'm gonna remove all the comments for now. I'll reintroduce them because I actually kind of like having them for readability. Just start up here. Since I can turn things into snake case, this just makes my life easy. I completely forgot that I could do that. Um, end of line, select everything, snake case, and then uppercase to get screaming snake case. Then ctk of this, comma, a string, this. Now we can come back over to our def file here. And Now I am going to grab my member selection. I'm going to populate these just because, again, I like kind of having some semblance of organization here and keeping these comments that I had previously used in my last lecture attempt. Makes me happy. Make me happy. Uh, all of our Boolean operators, all of our bitwise operators, which is going to start at the tilde. Um, we don't actually need a lot of... I'm going to probably comment out any of the non-multibyte ones. But since this was so easy to do, 
we don't have to do much with it. Arithmetic um, plus, I know I put this in the wrong spot here, that goes there. And then other delimiters. So we don't care about the dot, we do care about the triple dot, we don't care about the comma, the colon, or the semicolon. So we'll just remove everything. Arithmetic has plus minus star slash and percent, that's fine. Assignment has equal, but that's a single token. All of these. Uh, tilde, ampersand, pipe, caret, then bang, uh, question mark, equal, equal, bang, equal. Uh, less and greater, minus, 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 greater. Okay, so we have minus, greater, we have minus, minus, plus, plus, greater, equal, less, equal, uh, bang, equal, equal, equal. We have pipe, pipe, or we have amper, amper for and, we have greater, greater for right shift, less, less for left shift, triple dot for our far args, plus equal, minus equal, star equal, slash equal, percent equal, which is going to highlight funny, but it's fine, ampersand equal, pipe equal, caret equal, uh, less, less equal, that is greater, greater equal, less, less equal greater, greater, equal. Okay, so that is all of our, I don't, is it, it's F9, okay, I have a button on my mouse that hits F9, that's why I keep getting random breakpoints, okay. So now we have access to those, cool. So we can do the same thing here for minus, minus, everywhere we see a plus, we turn it into a minus, and then everywhere we see a plus, we turn it into a minus. I missed one, but that's fine. We'll just uh, minus. Cool. Because minus has minus minus and minus equals. That knocks out our first two. Star does not have all of these cases. So we'll take out the first case of double the value. Turn this. Ooh, star is not, not star. Minus is a bad one for that. Star, star, star. So that's our multiplication. Uh, Div and mod should be all the same. So do a slash for slash and do a modulo a percent for percent equal. Then that knocks these three off here. And and pipe are gonna have a bit more complicated stuff. So we're gonna grab this one as reference. We have amp, 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 amp equal, amp, amp, amp. And per sand, uh, like that. We'll probably do the exact same thing for pipe. Pipe equal. Okay. Then, so that knocks out our first two of these operators. Caret is going to work just like uh, star is. We're going to grab star to do caret. Caret and caret. For our XOR and XOR equal. That knocks out that. So then we have less, greater, equal, bang. Less and greater are going to be complicated like plus. Ooh, less, less, less. Interesting. Less. But on top of less here, we're going to have an additional case right here. So less, less can be less, less equal if we do it like that. Less, less equal. Otherwise, it's just less equal or just less. And it could be less, less on its own, right? Like we've, we've got all four cases for less. Less is complicated. Greater is exactly the same as uh, less. It doesn't have the same problem. That's great. One, two, three, four. Greater. And then we can do equal and bang equal the same way that we do the other ones. So if we hit equal and we see another equal, then it turns into equal equal. And if we hit bang, it turns that not till we bang, then it turns into bang equal. And that is most of our fancy tokens here now. I believe that gets us a very 
good distance there. So now we have to do numbers and keywords. Numbers, I don't know 100% how the standard handles numbers. So I'm going to be a little bit lazy at the start and just lex um, integers, not floating point, not reals. Um, and I'm going to avoid hex for right now. Hex isn't that difficult, but I just want to try to get every token kind figured out and we'll get to doing it right afterward. I know taking shortcuts, this shortcut is worth doing just because I don't understand it. So like I said, we're going to do for as long as it's a digit, we're just going to eat it up. I'm not even going to get the integer value out of it yet because we don't, we won't care until semantic analysis at the earliest. So I'll worry about when we do the update to use reels, we'll also worry about parsing them ahead of time so that we have the value that we need because I don't want to do a float parser and I don't, I guess we could just actually use the C standard library parser. We could just make sure that we lex a valid thing and then call like, what, A to L for a long, stir to L if it exists, stir to D for a double. That might save us a lot of time, actually. So I'll consider that. Um, but what we really want to do is just while uh, is digit um, lexer current character, which basically knew what we did here, advance. And then we can make sure that this is set to, I'm going to do it after the fact here, to lit int. And do we do anything else here? We set the, the end, but we don't need a string value. So we can just like do do better integer handling plus real and we'll do um, 0b, 0x, and real. Okay, so we have a lot of things to do for int. Maybe I do that this episode. Like I said, I'm getting a little tired. This might be a, I do half of it tonight and I do half of it tomorrow morning. So identifiers though, we want to then be able to turn these into keywords. So I'm going to create a little temporary struct up here, right here, sure. Uh, type def struct. I'm going to put the type def up here with the lexer type def. Uh, keyword info is keyword info. Now we can make a keyword info struct. Array here called, let's call this one C89 keywords. And that'll be our base class for keywords. Class is not, not what I mean, the base case. There'll be an array equal to something. And this is where I want to go back to tokens here and find our C89 keyword list. I'm going to copy all of this out into a new buffer again, just because I like doing this. Copy. Uh, I don't even actually, hold on. We can map from... Yeah, we're going to want to just switch the order of these. This needs to go here. Then this needs to go here. But instead of like this, it needs to be legacy ctk underscore. Throw a comma at the end. And now we've got a list of C89 keywords. So what we need to do is turn this struct into const car name and ycc token kind kind. And then we can do a lookup in this table here. So the one thing I'm going to do that's slightly different is just include a zero initialized one at the end so we don't have to know the count even though we technically could. We can just go till we hit zero. So now what we want to do is in identifier, we want to say, we've already marked it as an identifier here. So what we can do is for, um, yeah, for, Long, long, we could just call it int at this point because we're not using it. int i equals zero. i uh, c89 keywords sub i dot name does not equal to null i plus plus. And that's where we hit our null terminated array, basically. If stir compare, which we do have, is equal to zero. So we're stir compare, but I think we want stir n compare. Stir n compare, we don't have defined yet. So we want to compare the Q 
keyword name with the um, out token string value dot data and use the length then we can break and set the kind equal to uh, c89 keywords sub i dot kind right simple as so now we just need to make sure stir n comp exists and it should give me the standard correct unsigned long long okay so let's say um, unsigned long long cast here <laughs> like that and then we can go into string.h grab stir comp make it stir n comp compare signed long long n a b and n cool baby now if we build do we have any other warnings no okay so we should now be able to do the same thing we did before with hello but we should see the keyword int instead of an identifier int and then the identifier main cool so that gives us keywords then Now I guess I have to figure out lexing this or put it off for later. We don't really use integer literals that much in this code base, so I could deal with this. But what we might want to go ahead and do is at least handle all of the identifier, the integer literal kinds. So let's say int radix is 10. That's our default parsing mode. If lexer current care is equal to zero, then we want to check a few things. The last case is going to be radix equal to eight. Not zero to eight. We're going to be in octal. If lexer, I think no matter what, we could probably just go ahead and advance this. Um, yes. Lexer advance p. We're always going to hit it. It's always going to be a leading zero, so we don't really care about it. P. Why did I type p? Lexer. God, I am losing my mind. If lexer peak, no process. Lexer one is well. We don't even need that anymore. We can just check if the current character. So if the lexer current character is B, or if it's capital B, then we want radix. Well, we need to advance as well. So advance lexer true like that, and radix equals two for a binary literal and we're going to edit the top one here because it's the more common case if it's x or x oh we have completely missed that oh boy if it's x or x then we want it to be base 16 and skip the x then we can do all of our digit processing here so and we're storing radix for if we ever do um, actual parsing in here, I might not. We might just handle this and remove the radix. So we're going to say for is digit or we need to check if it's hex as well. If radix is equal to 16, so I guess that's a good reason to have it. If radix is equal to 16, then we want to check is hex digit of lexer current car. And otherwise, we just want to check if it's a digit. Even if it's a binary literal or an octal literal, we want to check all the valid digits because they can't be suffixes either. So we go to the end of all the digits, complain about the ones that are invalid, and then we'll check for a suffix at the end. So this will advance to the end of the valid literal. We're not handling separators yet because I don't think that's introduced until 17? 23. I think C23 finally introduces literals for, or separators for integer literals. Oh, my tongue is falling asleep. Um, when make it a literal integer, we can then throw in a to-do for suffixes, because I never actually lex to the suffixes. I assume you're just going to read the remaining identifier parts until the end of the integer, and then determine if that is a, um, a valid suffix or not. So we could even just do that. 
I wouldn't be able to report on it right now. I don't have a list of valid suffixes, but like, I mean, U, L, 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 U, L, 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 U, L, U. Might even be able to throw in an F and a D and maybe an L, D on there. Well, you don't really need a D, but does D support it? I don't know. Right, so like, integer suffixes. So like those are correct. So let's just say if is alphanumeric really just is alpha. I am curious though, if I if I were to use this C file as an example, if I were to type int a equals one, two, three, LLU, we can see that the suffix is highlighted here. I wouldn't want it to be an int, let's make it a long long, if I can call it an LL and actually be good about it. If I do that, what if I call it LLX? The whole thing dies, it doesn't like it, it'll tell me bad things. What if I say LLX9? It continues to just report it all as one thing. So if it's alphanumeric makes sense, we can just continue eating alphanumeric characters after we've hit our first non-valid digit, basically. Um, so if is alphanumeric, then we're just going to do a do while while is alphanumeric to eat the rest of the thing. Do uh, advance. So then we can say ISE location suffix location is lexer get location. So we can store that. Um, I guess we could store that in here, and then we can say string view um, string view suffix view zero initialize that so we can check it later, and then we can just do what we did up here with um, identifiers and say. So we want to start with suffix location, and then we want to do a suffix end location, and go from there. So then we can do a check. Can you do that? Oh, you can do that. That's cursed, honestly, but sure, we'll do that. So then down here we can check uh, if suffix view dot length data does not equal to null pointer. Um, we'll say if length not equal to zero, because that works as well. Now we can just uh, throw a diagnostic for now that says we're not checking those. So our most recent diagnostic is this one. We're gonna yoink this one. It's already an error. Don't have to do any new formatting. Um, integer literal suffixes are not yet supported. Cool. That is as close to done as I want to get before I look at the standard for things. Like I could obviously handle all of these suffixes, but I'm going to want to write a utility function at this point for doing this kind of string comparison. I probably want to write a string view equals um, or string view compare function so that I don't always have to do value.data and value.length. So we're going to write that utility function. We're going to look at the standard for how else I want to implement these numbers more correctly, because parsing numbers is one of the things in the standard that I am the least confident in that isn't the preprocessor, at least. Everything else I can get by with. I know it well enough. So we've got C89 keywords. We've got some basic identifiers that aren't technically standard compliant. They're close enough. We've got invalid characters. We've got a place to insert the preprocessor. We've got it all. That was already only 24 minutes. Okay, let's run it one more time. And then I'm gonna switch it to the driver. We're just gonna see how many of these it gets right. So on the driver, could not read source file test driver because I typed it wrong. Source driver, how many of these are right? How many are we getting? All the way at the top here. So it doesn't know how to handle include directives yet, so that's fine. But it knows what a less than is, it knows that I assert as an identifier. 
well, it would be if it wasn't in a string. It doesn't know that this is a string yet. That's a preprocessor string. We're not handling string literals yet. That's something I should probably do before we go. Um, we'll have to build strings, though. Again, if we want to set their value properly. Um, standard I.O. again, that's a string that it doesn't know about yet. Here's a string that it doesn't know about yet at all. Then dot... Okay, most of these look good. Again, the things that it really doesn't understand, it really doesn't understand. Uh, dot, invalid C token dot, wait a second. Has that been the case for all of these and I've just missed it? Invalid C token dot. What the heck? Oh, because I didn't handle dot. Duh, I thought I had it in this case. I don't. We're going to do a case for dot really quick. That's one thing we're definitely missing. Break. So advance lexer if um, lexer current character is equal to dot and um, lexer, not lexer that, um, Lexer peak, no process, lexer one is equal to dot. Then we want to advance twice and return the dot. Else um, out token kind is just a dot. So true out token kind equals dot dot. Do I not have a dot 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 dot? I see ctk dot triple dot. That's what I called it. Now, one more time on this, all of those dots. Too few arguments to function call. I did it on one, but not the other. Now all of our dots should be valid. Where are the dots? Where are the dots? Where are the dots? Where are the less equal? That's fun. Um, are we just missing all the dots because they're tiny now? There's dots. That's three dots in a row, though. Driver 1054. 10. Oh, <laughs> of course. Um, but that's still three dots in a row. It should be returning triple dot. I guess that's a good test since we have currently invalid stuff. We can check that that is 10, 54, 5, and 6. Doesn't like that it's a dot. Lexer.c. If we hit a dot, we advance. If it's currently a dot and the next one's a dot, it should return triple dot. So does that mean our peak is broken? Lexer current plus a head. Oh, but we're already a head one. So this should be a head minus one. Let me try that. Get back up to line 10. Triple dot, that's all it was. Okay, so I, I'm asserting that we want to peak one character ahead of where we're at, but we've already read the character, so we're actually already one character ahead of where we want to be. So we want to read one byte before, one byte after. Plus, we, do, we want to read the current character, but we want to do it in a way that makes more semantic sense from outside of the lexer state, basically. Okay, so that fixes that bug. I'm going to then do character literals, I think. And then string literals. Let's do character above here. Case this. Break. We're going to just straight up yoink. I don't know why I keep scrolling. I can type. I have fingers. Out token. Kind equals lit car. And then we'll go ahead and put down lit string. We're probably not going to put these into values yet. Like I said, I want to have like a string builder for this one at least. This one will probably work. I can do it. And the way we're going to do these is we need to handle escapes. And I'm going to go ahead and do escapes first. So static int. ICC lexer read escape sequence. ICC lexer lexer. So let's go ahead and 
already be after the slash, probably. Or we can just assert that we're at the backslash and then continue. But what we want to do, I guess, is when we hit the backslash, we want to make sure we're not at a new line character immediately after. So we're going to end up peaking that without processing. That'll be the only thing that we have to do beforehand. So that's probably an assertion we should handle. Assert that the current character, Lexer current character, is a backslash, because we do want to start here. But then also assert um, peak no process Lexer 1 does not equal to um, n or r. A little bit of a long line there, barely fits on my big ass zoomed in screen. But then we want to advance past it, Lexer advance Lexer, and we want to read the escape sequence. We want to switch on, gotta say true. Uh, well, in this case, if we're reading an escape sequence, we don't want comments. If we're in a string literal, the only place we ever disallow, or the only place we ever allow comments is in the angle brackets string of a preprocessor include. If we're in a character literal, that never happens. If we want to reuse this case for parsing Unicode um, things, like if I come over here and I... Uh, you, I don't know, 67 or 68, I guess. This is, um, there's an H at the end now, right? I don't think that works with like, let's, because most of the escape sequences don't turn into characters, so they wouldn't like be allowed anyway. But if I backslash in, what does that do? It doesn't like it. Unrecognized token. Interesting inter -dusting. So we're really only going to end up with the case where it's U, which we can handle by just peeking a, a little bit ahead and validating it, and otherwise just like eating it and throwing the error, right? So I think we're fine here to just always say, well, we should probably bring it in. Hold on. Allow comments. Because we're going to have to pass that somewhere, which is going to be in that one case. Everything else is going to say false, except for that one where it's going to be true. It's distracting me again. So switch on Lexer current character, which will be zero if we're at an end of file. So I guess we could say end of file reached if we hit if um, Lexer EOF Lexer return zero and say Go grab this is something I'm worth, I think it's worth scrolling in prologue copying. Then we can say end of file reached in then lexing. I'm gonna look through other compilers and find like actual error messages I can compare against. Uh, but for right now I don't care. And a file reached when lexing escape sequence. So let's also go ahead and grab our location here. Just call it load. Oh, how did we get there? Location like that for just these three. Return zero. So then we can do a default that is going to do the exact same thing we just did here, except it's um unrecognized escape sequence like that cool uh, and then i'm going to do all the easy sequences i'm not going to handle unicode just yet for the same reason i'm not doing it in identifiers i just don't want to parse extra data right now so case n it becomes that we got a bunch of these though so let's say um t Oh, the fact that it's n is actually a problem, isn't it? 
That's very interesting. I'll use well, T is going to hit too, though. Oh, weird. I confused. So T, V, uh, F, R, N, um, tab, vertical tab, form feed, carriage return, new line, zero. Uh, I think A and B are both allowed as well. We do A, B, F, N, A, B, F, N, T, V, Q, R, S, T, V, yeah, cool. Put zero up at the top. Those are the ones I remember off the top of my head. I don't even know if B is. Apparently it is. Bell, something else. Um, We'll go through other ones later. That handles all of our easy cases. And then we can go all the way down to case quote and case not quote. We need to I have to do some more errors here as well. Advance this. Yoink it for both. We are here. If Lyacy, not Lyacy, Lexer dot current character is equal to a backslash then we want to um, read escape sequence allowing for comments set to false lexer false else just advance again and then let's see car test is something. If I don't put anything in there, it's going to say quoted string should contain at least one character. So we can make that check here. If lexer current is equal to the the, then I can just say else like that. Then we can grab an error, put it in here. I'm going to call this quoted character literal. It should contain at least one character. That works. This calls it a quoted string literal. Quoted string doesn't even say literal. Quoted character should contain at least one character. That works for me. Um, but then what if we do A without a close? What's my error then? I expected a semicolon. Even worse. Missing closing quote. But like, does it actually just keep going? Because weird if so, missing a closing quote. The way that it parses that is just weird. Like if I said A, B, C, D, it's going to keep reading this. But I think what I really want to do is just, hey, if there's a missing quote, we just stop. So if lexer current uh, is not equal to this, uh, and then if it is, we just advance. Then I can grab another error here. Not have to type my whole errors thing out. Missing closing quote. Easy enough. Now here's the problem. We need locations. Now we can report it at the start location. That's doable. I'm okay with that. So it's a character literal. We've done some handling of the character literal. So then we can do something very similar down here. If we get to this point and it's not a this. We have a missing close quote, but then we don't need us. We don't need to do like, oh, you have to have at least one character. This is fine here. So then, what we want to do is while um, current character is not the close quote, we are going to check if lex or elf. Then we're going to like I don't know, report an error that says unfinished. just break. And by break, I mean we probably don't even want to hit this. 
they probably want to actually break break. So I'm going to just make a case for the very bottom here for like um, finished token. And we're going to, we're not afraid of GoTo on this channel. We love GoTo. GoTo is our second favorite thing. Not really, but I love GoTo. I use GoTo a lot. We want to be here. So in this case, we're just going to go to finish the token because there's nothing left to do. That's not the case we want. We want this, this case. And that case is going to go to finish token. If we hit the end of file, there's nothing else we can do. We're going to try to make it a good looking token and we're going to get rid of it. Otherwise, else if current character is equal to a backslash, we're going to uh, read escape sequence, like sort of false, and then else we're just going to advance. And again, we're not building anything right now. We're going to build the string literal at a later point when I care to do so, because we're going to need a string builder. We don't have a string builder. We could use a vector of car, actually. We could use a vector of car and just push. That That's not a bad idea. Now we can just make sure it's null terminated and set it as a thing. Okay, hold on. Um, vector car string data is null. Right? There's our case. And then up here, we can actually go ahead and set the... When we read the escape sequence, we can just set um, the out token integer value, because that'll just be... Oh, hello. Integer value equal to uh, int will cast up to one. I'm just fine. So that gives us our character literal for free. So then string data here. Whenever we hit a escape sequence, here's the problem. If I do a vector of character literal, I don't have a way to decode Unicode. The escape sequence can return Unicode and the lexer advance can return Unicode. So I need to be able to push Unicode characters in UTF-8 encoding to our vector string data. I'm going to keep the string data here with a note for a to-do local. Um, when we write or copy an old UTF-8 um, decoder, encoder, decoder, encoder, we're going to need the decoder anyway. Um, do string building as well. I'm going to leave it there, and we're going to, at the end here, say that out token dot out token dot string value is going to be string view create from our string data and vector count of string data. And one of the things we're going to do here is vector push string data zero, just to make sure it's null terminated at all times. Even though we're using a string view, we, we still want to be kind of compatible with all of our fancy C functions for now. So this will give us a null terminated, just completely empty string for now. And when we handle unit UTF-8, encoding and decoding. We'll actually push these onto our vector, and that's a free string builder. So that gets us easy numbers, technically in either base, without parsing. That gives us character literal parsing, and we get string data that will be parsed eventually. That's most of the way there, I'd say. We're getting pretty close to technically lexing all of C. I'm being a little bit, oh, I don't want to do it right now, for like half decent good reason, right? Um, literal string now exists here. That's good. It's the correct string width. Then plus plus is already there. Literal integer. Any other tokens up here that we need to take a look at? Mod s. Usage text got parsed into one whole thing. We're looking at the, the thing without the escape sequence, but it didn't tell us it was an invalid escape, escape sequence. So that's good. Um, what the heck? What the heck is going on there? This whole literal string 
decided to end up all the way over here. Skip the first one while it's not equal. Then error, and then do this. What? What's wrong with this? Back in driver. What are we looking at here? So again, we're not parsing these strings correctly yet because it's a preprocessor thing. This is also a preprocessor thing, but we want to reuse our tokenizer for it. So um, why is it wrong? Why is C context.h? That's correct. But then there's a new line. And then it fails. And it goes all the way to the next include. And then we see lie is C. Is it just printing wrong? Hold on. No, 410.511 is liacy. But then there's no slash. We don't see slash source. So where did the slash source go? Because then the next thing we see is it finishes the string literal again and hits the, the this at the beginning of line six. And then it sees the identifier for include and then a literal string that consumes the include again. And then we see liacy, which should be right um, here for util. No, it hits uh, this. It skips over util, that's right. And then it hits this, but then it reads to the end, doesn't print it, and gives us const. Why? I don't know that my sleepy brain can handle this. I'm gonna probably leave this for tomorrow me to figure out. Uh, and we'll end the episode with me debugging this in the morning. And then we can do one more quick test and start pre-processing. So, morning me. Okay, so morning local had to take a lunch and now it's afternoon local and... It was a stupid bug. It was a really stupid bug. Let me get this out of the way here. If we go into the lexer, the bug was we changed the behavior of peak no process because of how we're treating the current pointer here. So whatever is before current is our current, where the current character is. So anytime we wanted a peak, we'd subtract one from here. So I had to make it two to counteract that change because we're doing character by character stuff without using our usual advanced thing because we're implementing advanced. So we gotta be a little bit careful here. So for comments, anytime it saw a slash, it was seeing the slash twice because we were subtracting one from one and it was doubling up the slashes. So we were getting a line comment and then it was just like failing. So we were getting a line comment rather in the middle of a um, string literal, which is interesting. So yeah, I fixed that for line and block comments. We should probably do a test on line and block comments. But now this stuff doesn't start a comment anymore. So what that means for me, though, actually, if I go back to the lexer and we look for our string here, we don't want to be advancing with comments anyway. Um, we'll advance with comments there, but not here. Uh, not here either. And probably not in any of these either. No comments. This one probably makes sense because we're not in a string anymore, but all of these should be false. That's that's the second part of what we forgot to do. So now we should be able to run this on the driver and see a bunch of actually valid tokens. And if we come back up to our strings here, we're not getting weird multi-line strings, we're just seeing the strings. So now the only things we've got here are invalid characters for the preprocessor. Now, whether or not all of these are correct tokens, I haven't like super double checked. 
but like const days car is int is we already checked in. We're getting literal strings. We're getting identifiers if they're not uh, return. Then we're getting literal integers. We already checked that. Literal integer lit less equal. Doot, 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 doot. Double equal, so multi, multi, whatever are working. Plus plus. Cool. So all of that actually looks good. Git commit. I forgot what we did yesterday, other than getting to the point where we've got this bug. So we're just going to say get high level token parsing to work. And we're going to do, I forgot to include this on my last commit, lycc, like that. We don't even need to do lycc. See, we can just do C. The category is C. So let's push that. You guys will see that before this video goes up for sure. Then that's really all I had. I know we're going to have to start doing pre-processing soon, and I'll probably record that not too long from now. But I need to get this other episode put together. We'll do integer suffixes again after we get some other things done. But this is good enough. We've written a kind of C lexer without most of the preprocessor and a few hundred lines of code with no dependencies and all of my shenanigans that I've decided on. So I'll see you next time when we do preprocessor stuff.